Team dynamics are critical during a code or resuscitation attempt. The interaction among team members has a profound impact on the effectiveness of each individual, as well as the patient's overall survival. Team size may vary, and you'll need to adapt roles accordingly. Regardless of the number, the better you work as a team, the better the potential outcome for your patient. That's why it's so important that you understand not just what to do in a resuscitation attempt, but how to communicate and perform as an effective team, regardless of your role as team member or team leader. A 66-year-old man has arrived in the emergency department with nausea, chest pain, and numbness in his arm. So you say you're feeling bad about an hour ago? Yeah, I was getting dizzy. I felt nauseous. And you're having some chest pains? Yeah. We're going to find out what's going on. Pressure is 70 over 40. Heart rate is 45. I'm going to get Dr. Loftus. Mr. Haley, I'm going to put you on some oxygen so you breathe a little easier, OK? OK. I'm also going to put you on a monitor so we can take a look at your heart rhythm. I'm really dizzy now. Hi, I'm Dr. Loftus. Looks like sinus bradycardia. Initial blood pressure was 70 over 40, heart rate is 45, respiratory is 16, and pulse ox is 92. But he's responding well to the nasal cannula. Let's get 0.5 milligrams of atropine ready, though. What's going on? Is something wrong? I, I, don't, I don't know, son. Nurse? His heart is beating too slow, so we're going to see what the doctor thinks, OK? Hello, I'm Dr. Loftus. How are you feeling? Not so good, doctor. Mr. Haley, can you hear me? He's unresponsive. He's in V-fib. Lenora, get the pads on, get ready to shock. Come, come with me, come with me. Mark, start chest compressions. Ma'am, I really don't want my son to see this. Is there anywhere I can take him? Absolutely. If, you, if you'd like, I can show you to the family waiting room. OK, OK. okay come Let's on. Go. Let's, Let's go. go. Pads on. Charging. Clear. Shocking. Shock delivered. Resume compressions. Dana, you're recording. Recording. Sam, you're managing the airway. Lenora, have you managed to establish an IV? No, I'm not able to get IV access. OK, Carla, let's move to IO. Moving to IO access. We'll continue CPR for two more minutes, and then we'll evaluate to see if we need additional shocks. In the meantime, Carla, can you prepare one milligram of epinephrine, but don't give it until I say so. Preparing one milligram of epinephrine, and we'll wait for your order to give it. We're at two minutes. Hold compressions. Switch compressors. He's still in V-fib. Continue compressions. Let's get ready to shock again. Charging at 200 joules. Clear. Shocking. Shock delivered. Resume compressions. OK, Carla, go ahead and deliver that epi now. Delivering one milligram of epinephrine. And the IO is flushed. Great. We delivered two shocks and one milligram of epinephrine. If the patient's still in V-fib at the next rhythm check, then the next medication to consider is amiodarone. So Carla, go ahead and prepare 300 milligrams of amiodarone, but don't give it until I tell you. Preparing 300 milligrams of amiodarone, and we'll wait for your order to give it. We're at two minutes. OK, let's analyze. Switch compressors. Looks like the patient's in persistent V-fib. Resume compressions. Resuming compressions. Charging. Clear. Shocking. Shock delivered. Continue compressions. Do you want to give the amiodarone now? Thanks, Dana. Carla, go ahead and give that amiodarone now. Delivering 300 milligrams of amiodarone. And the IO is flushed. Great. We've delivered three shocks. After the second shock, we gave one milligram of epinephrine. We just gave 300 milligrams of amiodarone. Go ahead, Carla, and prepare another milligram of epinephrine, and I'm going to intubate. Got it. Two minutes. Let's analyze. Switch compressors. We have sinus bradycardia. Do we have a pulse? No, I don't feel one. Continue chest compressions. All right, let's review the reversible causes by considering the H's and T's. He came in with chest discomfort. Could it be coronary thrombosis? That's what I'm thinking. Everything seems to suggest a STEMI. 
Patient was off hypotensive on presentation. How about pericardial tamponade? Good idea. Let's check a quick ultrasound. Two minutes. Let's analyze. Switch compressors. The monitor now shows sinus tachycardia. Capno just went to 40. Sam, do you have a pulse? Yes, I've got a rapid weak pulse. Okay, great. Let's initiate immediate post-cardiac arrest care. Can we check to see if the patient is breathing and responsive? Lenora, Sir, I need a finger? complete set of vitals and labs. The patient's still unresponsive. No, he's still not breathing. Okay, continue ventilating. The patient has a blood pressure of 82 over 40 with a heart rate of 130. He's hypotensive. Let's get him another liter of saline. Lenora, can I get a 12 lead ECG, please? And let's check the patient's temperature and initiate targeted temperature management protocol. O2 saturation is 96%, and blood pressure is up to 110 over 70 now. What's your 12 lead? He has a STEMI. Mark, call the cath lab and let them know that we have a STEMI patient that just had ROSC after cardiac arrest. Let them know that the patient is now hemodynamically stable, and we've initiated targeted temperature management. The return of spontaneous circulation, or ROSC, is not the end of the cardiac arrest protocol. Targeted temperature management, previously known as therapeutic hypothermia, is the only intervention that has been shown to improve neurologic recovery after cardiac arrest and ROSC. The resuscitation team should consider inducing targeted temperature management for any patient who remains comatose after ROSC. The AHA recommends cooling to a target temperature of 32 to 36 degrees Celsius for at least 24 hours. More scientific studies show that survival rates improve significantly with a comprehensive system of post-cardiac arrest care. It's important to know your local system's plan for the management of post-cardiac arrest patients. Combining your knowledge of essential arrest skills with effective team dynamics can give your team a better chance of success with every resuscitation attempt.